Oh, yeah, there we are. <laughs> drop, drop, drop that bomb on me as you're pressing the button. <laughs> I'm owning it, man. Aiden can't sing anymore. Oh, uh, you know what? We're not going to mention what the project is. But yeah, well, I was going to say, like, I mean, I thought I did a good job of editing it. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. But yeah. Was, yeah. You definitely filled in the gaps. Uh, we're, uh, oh, yeah. We should go through and do some greetings. I like it. UK. Ooh. Greetings from the UK. How's right. It? uh dan dan's in the house i knew the screen was lying when it said 60 seconds yeah i get that a lot <laughs> uh sean wants to know when could aiden sing actually i i you know what and it reminds me is that shade or is that an actual question oh, i don't care i don't care <laughs> uh before i address that sr375 nothing wrong with auto lame sorry auto tune yeah, auto tune uh, is is been uh, helping me out lately. Uh, so when could I sing? So I think to me singing is a lot like a fine motor control. Um, and as you age, you lose certain fine motor control if you don't use it. That's why people become. I mean, in their old sing, age. singing is literally fine motor control. Yeah. I mean, the muscles that control the 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 tenseness or the the. Yeah tension i should say of your vocal folds those that's a really fine muscle groups and i back in my 20s and 30s i fronted some bands and we went on tours and i had no problems uh you, you know a couple of weeks of just hitting the music and singing and everything was back up and spruce and i was mostly on key for most things and didn't have a problem and then uh last time i played a gig was probably 10 years ago with our old friend um what's his name from uh from rogers the old production boss mike there. mike i played a gig with him up in uh up in perth perth ontario oh, yeah and uh yeah that was the last time hit all the notes didn't have a problem i was in my 30s man i was in my 30s and then uh you know we did the the hurt one and i wasn't perf i was pretty pitchy on hurt not gonna lie but i was a lot that was also the lower end of my register because those were, we were you could tell yeah yeah getting getting the power down there yeah. is hard it's, it's hard tough. to do that and yeah so when i came out we're, we're doing a music project it's going to be coming out very soon that's all i can say like i can't say exactly when it's in dylan's hands right now but uh i started singing the main uh verse and chorus and i was i was dipping out uh i was like yeah that was that was rough that that made me feel like i was old so i've actually started doing some of the exercises around singing so yeah uh, then i got sick by the way uh that's the other part of this if you notice uh i disappear from the screen and dylan's front and center this because i'm probably blowing my nose i am completely wiped out with some sort of flu bug so oh, no let's keep that in mind as well uh sean i could never sing but lost more uh, bowel control than anything with age you can actually work those muscles too uh <laughs> i like it uk i don't sing i wouldn't i don't want to scare my cat that's fair and liberty dude how's it going buddy problem with auto-tune the best singers are replaced with mediocre yeah you know what and i've always had the ability i've always had good a good tone a good uh just kind of vibe for my voice uh my control has never been like i ain't no freddie mercury and i never have been i've never been the uh well-trained voice but i've always been able to carry it and uh yeah uh that's kind of sad but also yeah it just makes you kind of play a little bit more it makes you pay attention because this is something i want to expand into and do a lot more of and the other option is, well, Dylan's now the lead singer of our band. <laughs> but then if that becomes the thing, if Dylan takes that over, what the fuck do I bring to it? What the fuck? Some some shoddy <laughs> ass guitar work? Is that all I'm doing? That, that is basically Dark Corner Studios uh, trafficking <laughs> my work. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically. No, we are no, now I the front for Dylan's would, band. You know, I think would be fun would be to set. So, so what number... What what value should we put on me sharing my screen and showing Aiden's edited vocal take right now? Oh, dude, um, yeah, no, do it, do it. Let's hide this. Come uh, on. And I I had to change the name of the file. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, just in case. Yeah, yeah. I got here. Since we're going to like 
out it <laughs> completely. And this is going to be all part of the video because this is going to be a two video series. We're going to be doing a video talking about the process we did because we're utilizing certain equipment to do this and whether or not you can. And then the second video is going to be the music video. So let's, uh, we haven't, yeah, we, we're not even sharing the name of the song. I don't think, no. I don't think we've done that in prior. So. No. Yeah. I don't think I'm just looking around and see if there's any like indications of what the song is. No. I think All right. Cool. Uh, oh, you got it. All right. I'll put it on stage. There we go. This <laughs> is holy crap. <laughs> holy crap. Uh, let's just put that full screen. Wow. Yeah. yeah. No, that's it's comp to hell. And then and then on top of that, I, I sent you the the pitch correction log. Yeah, yeah. Not not many tweaks there. There were just like a handful of notes that there was just more variances. The thing there's a difference between uh pitch correction and auto-tune, right? Pitch yeah. correction is a is a human activity. It's like, hey, so I'm gonna leave your performance the way it is, but the whole thing was just a little bit flat. So I'm gonna keep keep your emotion in the note. Whereas I like, I don't like auto tune because I find it's, it's mechanical. Yeah. I mean, it well, doesn't, you don't want me to sound like share. Yeah. You can't, you can't auto tune uh, and have discretion with what you're tuned. I mean, you can to a degree. I know auto tune yeah. would argue with me on that, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I will say this though. I've edited worse. Oh, um, that's fair. Oh, I, I, I've edited points where like whole phrases are oh wow I like like ev almost every syllable <laughs> is its own <laughs> is its own thing and so this isn't bad like here i'd say on average every every phrase more or less and then it was interesting aiden uh because we did some where you were singing along with the original remember yeah. that yeah, yeah and so um you know with those because we were recording the song at a similar speed so i knew that okay within certain variances i can i can sync these up and I almost didn't use any of those. You know why? Yeah, I was because, probably harmonizing with them. No, no, you were your pitch was good, but everything else about your read was flat. Your sing was flat. Um, there was no emotion. It was you were the notes were on point, but it was super light. I wasn't getting any power, and so other than some like I don't know some little accent phrases that could stand to be quieter because I mean this is kind of a marchy kind of a thing without giving too much away. So I wanted yeah. it to be have the power. So. Yeah, other than again the occasional syllable, um, I didn't use much from that. But nice. Uh, Red Cabin says, "Just wait till you get into your seventh decade; it's all good." <laughs> uh, uh, Sean's on his way back to work. Bye, Sean. Uh, Liberty, dude, congrats, Aiden. You're not the worst. Also, <laughs> he would like to hear uh, SR three seventy five. Would like to hear an Aiden version of Share. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, I just throw auto tune, set the speed to yeah. zero milliseconds. <laughs> Yeah. I think I've done that jokingly on some of our first streams where I had to go through like a Pro Tools chain. A Pro oh, yeah. Tools I think, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I did that just because. Oh, bored. we could do some, we could do a T Pain cover. Do you really want yeah, to flex the auto tune? Let us know in the comments if we should do an entire stream uh, through auto tune, just talking <laughs> with oh, auto tune. Oh, engaged. God. Yeah. We'd have to pick the scale though, because I'm not doing chromatic. It's got to be a musical scale of some kind. That's C major. That's not... did you, what did you say? D, D major? No, it's C major. C major. It's okay. Well, major I mean, that's, scale. that's boring, but whatever. Uh, okay. You want, you want, let me guess, a Lydian scale. Is that what you're looking for? No, I was going to say F sharp minor, because that's the tune. That's the key. Okay. Yeah. Point. F sharp minor. All right. Oh, no, uh, I gave you identifying yeah, information. Yeah. <laughs> it's a marching song in F sharp minor, whatever. Uh, I don't think, be Locrian. <laughs> <laughs> be Locrian. Oh, God, Locrian, my least favorite of the most. Yeah, so just to give you an idea, everyone is saying yes. That's weird. Yes to the auto-tune during the stream? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> auto-tune in B Locrian, in, in which is just C major. Um, yeah. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Noodle C says, major, but starting on a B, which is B is the worst note to start on in a C major scale. Uh, Camille says, uh, Camille Backstein says, Friday stream the musical. Yes, I think that would be funny. Uh, we have to sing certain items. And I just want to bring this out here. Um, when I mentioned I could nail meatloaf, no, uh, this was my crown 
jewel. The Meatloaf, uh, Anything for Love, is one of those songs that I could do in my sleep. And I haven't yet gone back to it to see. Uh, I was going to pull out a microphone. I was just going to get the BPM for it. And I was just going to start singing along to see what happens. And I haven't gotten around to it because I'm almost scared. Now, <laughs> it's up near the top of my register. Yeah, as it uh, would be. And I, I like, I almost max out on it. Sometimes I drop it down half, uh, half a step, just so I can make sure I hit that one note. But for the most part, it's it's right up there. And I have the highest control up there as well. When I'm up in that higher range, I don't tend to slip uh, going in or coming out of a note. So I want to try that one. You know how to play the piano. I think that's our next tune, man. Some kind of... It, you think you can her. you think you can crush anything for love on piano? Oh yeah. <laughs> you can just wing it too. Like yeah, you, you don't even have to like No, you know. I, I mean you don't you don't fuck with that song. I, I there would be some stuff that will up, be up to interpretation. Is um, that song a don't fuck with it song? Is that on that level? I think it is. I I don't know. I think any hit from an artist who's dead. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I for, I forget that he died. That's so sad. I know. Yeah, that was that was rough. I think Ottawa uh, helped with that too because he collapsed on stage shortly before he died in Ottawa. <laughs> that is our claim to fame. Yeah, uh, put up put up a statue. It's like Terry Fox in Thunder Bay. Didn't quite die in Thunder Bay, but we got the no 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 there. no. It's like in St. Thomas, Ontario, which is south of London. They have a statue of Jumbo the elephant, which was who was hit by a train. Elephant <laughs> hit by a train. It was a runaway circus elephant, <laughs> and they have a statue of it in St. Thomas. Is it a statue of the train hitting the elephant? Because that would no, be awesome. No, it's, I right. think it's just the elephant. <laughs> uh, as long as we don't sound like robot chipmunks. Oh, I mean that's likely. I mean. <laughs> I like if it's annoying, we'll turn it off. Okay, we'll say that. We'll, we'll put that in like, uh, you know, grape, grape, uh, olive branch, grapevine. I was gonna say grapevine. That that dude ball. says Fight Club Man Boobs. That's the name of my sex tape. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? It's a lot of Fight laughing Club noises. Man. That's what all I can say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> farting robot chipmunks would be okay i'm glad to hear steve says you killed meatloaf i'm out of here uh we didn't, we didn't technically we probably didn't help i believe he was he collapsed from dehydration if i recall uh and i wanted to go see that one when he came through he was on my my bucket list uh i've always loved theatrical performers and he would uh probably hit the list as one of the biggest theatrical performers of all time oh 100 yeah absolutely um, him and uh uh oh shit man my brain just went like mulch um living in america james brown james brown was the other one that i really wanted to see but obviously i'm way too i was way too young to be able to see that concert uh but yeah so uh, just one of those things of working on my voice and this is something that I've, i'm actually going to develop and i was talking to a buddy of mine i was working out with him and he's like, well, dude, if you're you're that far out, he's like, why, why don't you like take some video of you over the course of the next year and just developing your vocal cords back up? And he's like, you can do a video in a year showing your one year of progress. I'm like, that's actually a pretty good idea. So I think I might do that as well as with my guitar because that's the other thing that I have not had enough time with. Um, I don't even work a job and I don't have time to play guitar. Isn't that sad? Like I, I watch a lot of YouTube. I'm not going to lie to you, but I also like, I'm constantly, I'm doing stuff for a podcast and stuff like that, but damn, uh, slapping man boobs was an old friend of mine, garage band name, <laughs> slapping man boobs. Oh, don't go getting me and promise me a good time. Um, yeah, that's, that's a decent name. I, I can't imagine you break out with that though. Anyways. Um, looking forward uh dylan i am going to be coming to pick up that mic from you that's i've got to get a uh a review done on that but because i was sick this week and i got like hammered as of wednesday uh i think there's only going to be one video coming out next week however and that's a big however the one video i'm doing is i'm finally doing a tier list I uh, actually did a tier list. I'm in the process of editing it. And I did it just for the sake of it had less moving parts, so it'd be easier to do. That said, it's an hour long. Um, 
I can't hear you, Dylan. Okay. Oh, you're doing something else. It's, it's, yeah, it's intentional. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I thought you were trying to talk to me. <laughs> um, so I'm doing a I'm doing a a tier list that's going to be coming out uh, on Monday. I'm still in the process of working. It's about an hour long, so I think that's enough content for the week. <laughs> so I'm also like trying to recover and get back to the two videos a week. So just keep that in mind. Now I need to know, Don, what are you doing? <laughs> Are you doing your other I'm, job? Trying to see how annoying it would be for us to talk in in auto tune for the entire. Show. Okay, all right. What are you, what are your thoughts so far? Um, it's not bad. Uh, it is obnoxious. <laughs> oh, yeah? Can you give us a taste? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool, cool. This is Dylan can and Auto. You hear this? I can, but you might want to gain up a little bit. Gain it up. <laughs> Gaining it up. Oh, so if I just talk normally through it, it just makes it quantizes my pitch. So I just got to try not to do that uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, this is ridiculous. Uh, do I actually want to do a poll on this? I I can't do a poll on here. That I think that's one problem here. One one streamyard issue. One streamyard issue is I can't do a freaking poll. That's disappointing. Um, who wants to hear that? Who actually wants to hear that through our whole stream? Anyway, we're going to figure out a way to get you set up with it too. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure we could. What no, are you running? Is it, uh, it's just, it's just waves tune RT. I just have to, uh, I actually have it on my laptop discord <laughs> for the poll. <laughs> oh man. How many, how many subscribers do you think we lose if we do that? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, too many. Type Y for S, N for no. Auto tune, please no. Thylo Grim. <laughs> There's one for no. Just so you know, guys, <laughs> we have one vote for no. Or, or I could. I mean, we could do worse. What's that? I could, I could do auto tune, but it only will correct to one pitch. <laughs> try that uh, well i don't think we're getting a whole lot of yeses out of this uh apparently your uh <laughs> the one the one that you showed us was bad enough oh it's pretty bad <laughs> that is horrendous <laughs> and Which just, just so you know i'm talking like this but it's doing that <laughs> which <laughs> note are you in there bud yeah, it's an All A. right, fun's over. Fun's <laughs> over. <laughs> uh, somebody's Steve, gonna somebody's gonna clip that. Steve wants robot voices. I can actually do that. Do like a vocoder thing. Well, I just got the, I've got the streamer X. So you can do it through that. I don't I think it's on this. Oh, this is. Oh, there the you one. go. Nice, you sound chip monkey. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. This is. Oh now, yeah. One is chipmunk. One is Satan. <laughs> It's really hard to talk when you're listening to yourself because you end up focusing on yourself. Does it does it impart a lot of latency when it tries to do that? No, it it doesn't actually impart latency. But the problem is you end up hearing yourself and then you start to pay attention. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then it sounds weird. Yeah, and yeah. it's really hard because you start slowing your speech down. Because oh, that's really one reason why when I'm voicing stuff, I never listen to myself. I always voice with headphones off usually. Oh, oh, a hundred percent. Because I find uh, what depends on the read. If I'm going for like a real announcery read, then yeah. But if I'm going for like a conversational read, headphones off every time. Yeah, no, I've I've tried the one headphone off, all that stuff. But I literally go into the hey guys, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, do that singing. Oh, so I like it. UK says it's fun in small bits for an hour. Ouch. Uh, Liberty dude says do that singing. Oompa 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 do do. The Oompa Loompa song? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what we're going to do? Okay, yeah, Dylan's on it. Dylan's on it, man. Dylan's for the people. <laughs> I'm going to blow my nose while you do that, okay? Oh, okay, yeah, you, you blow your nose while I do. Oompa Loompa Doopa Dee Doop. I don't know the rest of the words. Okay, I can't. I can't. That is too much. That is too much. <laughs> Since you started, we've gotten like four different people in on the stream. So I say keep going. <laughs> I 
at the worst possible time. Oh my god. No, we yeah, we I don't know. I don't know. Or are we make it like a thing? I wish I could set a shortcut to it and then I don't know, we could just uh you know what we should do is we should do a video series of screwing around with auto tune. <laughs> or or just just screwing around with tools in general. Like, hey, let's let's have a conversation through audio tools not in the way that they're supposed to be used. Like <laughs> com- compressors pushing like 30 dB of gain <laughs> reduction on them. <laughs> just just stupid stuff. Stuff that would make any audio engineer cringe. No one knows the rest of that, luckily. I would say, obviously, already most of the stuff we do on the stream would make most audio engineers cringe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I speaking of making people cringe, I got one of the best uh, cringy comments. Oh, um, yeah, I love these. Uh, it, I'll share this one. It's on my phone here. I did a video way back um, on how to make your own sound treatment for your for your studio, right? Yeah. And uh, they actually work really, really well. It's just rock wool. A lot of people use rock wool. It's, uh, it's n- no, uh, it's no secret rock wool works. It's not overly like, you're not going to get like professional panel results, but it does work. It does deaden a lively room quite a bit. Uh, and so I got, um, who's this? Uh, Julian Rowland <laughs> says, and this was 51 minutes ago. I apologize for my brutal honesty. He mis- well, I didn't really misspell it. But don't parade your <laughs> DIY designs here and try to gain popularity by showing how little you know about acoustics. Whoa. That's spicy. That is... Um, Wait, read that again? What? <laughs> okay. That was a lot in there. So, I apologize for my brutal honesty, which I guess at this point I can't take any offense. But don't parade your DIY designs here and try to gain popularity by showing how little you know about acoustics. And what was the video? What was the... Is it making those, you know, those uh, panels, those blue panels I have in my uh, my studio? Yeah. Uh, It was basically making those out of rock, wool, and wood. Basically, one of the most common designs for DIY acoustic panels. I I mean, here's here's the thing. Are you... And this is when people are thinking about acoustics, they're going to evaluate it from a number of different perspectives, right? The one that you're evaluating it from is managing the acoustics of speech, like reasonable volume speech in a room. And people would be surprised to know the, the, the not that a lot that you have to do to your room in order to manage it for speech. If you're recording bass amps, (laughs) <laughs> yeah or, or if you're recording drums or yep. even i would say if you're recording like a broad spectrum instrument like a like an acoustic guitar uh yeah you're gonna have to take in some more considerations um you know the shaping of the room some diffusion of some kind not just because what your panels do is just absorption um and they absorption on like one axis right uh well i guess two because you've got them on two sets of walls but so that person who made that comment is probably evaluating from a broad spectrum absorb all frequencies in an anechoic chamber type of and yeah obviously that's not going to be sufficient but that's not what we're going after yeah i mean i would just go get some professional panels and and bass traps and all that stuff which is going to happen at some point yeah and and like you know if money is no object rebuild the room so that it has things like no parallel walls ceiling yeah. panels right Absolutely. nimbus clouds probably hang from the ceiling there's stuff like that <clears throat> i i don't understand some people uh, but you know what? I, I also love the salty people who, who feel like they need to try to stomp on people for having the ability to come out and make videos. And I find mm-hmm. that a lot of people, their saltiness comes from the fact that they can't do it themselves. Yeah. They haven't and, done anything. And there's some really smart people out there. Dylan, you're, you're a good example. Somebody that would benefit, the world would benefit from you doing videos. hundred uh, percent. I'd like to think they would. I'd like to think I've have some things worth saying. You could teach people a lot of shit, but you don't, or you haven't yet. Yeah. yeah. And it's because it's, there's a lot to overcome to get to the point where you're doing videos. It's not like a, uh, you just wake up one day and fuck it, I'm making videos. You like from a video perspective, from an editing perspective. Oh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta carve out. You gotta carve yeah. out a format, and and the format yep. has to be somewhat unique to you. And and I don't. I think people that are just YouTube consumers the, underestimate the the nuances in the format that that oh. somebody can have. Like you know, all audio channels are the same. No, they're not. 
No, they're not. Every no. everybody has their own little tips and little things that they do that make it theirs. And yep. um, and even stuff that you was like, well, that's obvious. Like the way that you list out your specifications in your reviews, right? Yeah. That is unique to you. Yep. Um, as as it is to Bandrew and as it is to you know for to Julian Krauss or or any other YouTuber in that in the field. So carving out that can take a long time to get all those details just right. Yep. Uh, just a confidence uh, perspective of putting out videos, having the confidence to do it. It's it, like that, that alone stops most people that alone, yeah. just sitting in front of a camera and talking in an empty room. It's true. It, it's very true. I don't think it's on anymore. So anyway. Liberty dude, 10 bucks. Cheers, buddy. Thank you very much for the super chat. And he says for the fun of going for it. Uh, we're always game, man. Bro, I if love that for the fun of going if, for it. If we can juggle, and it's going to make people clap. Yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I will anyways. Uh, but it seems like Dylan's just his game too. Uh, SR 375. Ouch. Eh, I don't, you know what I find? I find bitter comments like that. Um, I, I've mentioned it before. There's a lot of people out there that have reached out to me with like, critiques but they're also like helpful critiques hey man uh this this is wrong or i don't th the way you're doing this you might want to try it this way or this way and I, like i'm always happy to get critiques on stuff but then you have people who just want to shit on you because you're doing something they're not doing or they don't like the way you did something and those people mean nothing they don't i don't value their input that's why i mock them in videos because I don't care. I really don't like, I'm not going to go to bed thinking about that guy. Uh, well, I might, you never know. Um, but no, I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to, it doesn't wreck my day. I really don't care because I mean, if you have a problem with the rock wool panels that I made and you have a way to say here, these would be better, or this would be a better way to actually make that. Uh, the video was horrendous. Cause I was shooting like a construction style, build where i didn't have the lens i didn't have the lighting i didn't have all the stuff for it but the concepts were there and i do actually want to redo that video yeah i was gonna say could you see yourself redoing it obviously uh, yes i can uh it's gonna take a little bit of setup because it's i'd probably do it outside mostly because there's cutting and all that stuff and i don't do that in my studio i used to but i had like a curtain drape that i had pulled so the dust quote unquote wouldn't get through yeah that's bullshit uh anyways uh moving on liberty dude there's a huge difference between controlling acoustics for recording the usual discussions revolving around listening positioning and mixing yeah like i don't mix i don't mix music in my basement i don't um i don't have a lot of bass in anything that i'm listening or um i do some mixing like i do uh a podcast editing and stuff like that i have the my setup's perfect for a voiceover uh scenario yeah that's like, it. like, like you know and it's true the the processing it for a listening environment versus a recording environment is uh, they're very different things you use yeah. all of the same tools more or less there's a few tools like you know things like helmholtz resonators i wouldn't yeah necessarily see the need to put well it depends on the space depends on the space too right yeah. like how how are you recording in a shed because well, yeah that's going to be very different than than recording in your living room um and you're gonna have to worry about different acoustical problems don't record in a shed but it's funny. Shed, I mean, big warehouse metal, yeah. you know, my father-in-law tells me this story. He was the uh, head of engineering at uh, EMI Canada, and right. he was given the uh, job of creating a room for, um, they're going to have like uh, conferences and stuff like that. But it was, it was just going to be the kind of room where people were going to meet. There was going to have meetings there. But they told him there's not going to be any music played in this room. And he's like, are you sure? He's like, because, you know, and like, well, these are the specs we want for the room. And, and Dan's like, well, no, these aren't great specs. He's like, don't worry about it. We're not playing music in the room. Dan's like, I can't build this to spec. And they're like, okay, you're off the project. So they build the room and it had some glass walls in it. Why? And Why? it was so bad <laughs> that when they started playing music and they hit the stop button, it took about a second and a half for the music to stop. And if you were standing like five, 10 feet apart, you couldn't actually understand what the person was saying. It was that bad. Absorption and, coefficients, man. Glass right? is a no-no. 
I just I get a kick out of stuff like that. But yeah, my studio, my studio is what it's for. I'm not gonna be recording any anything major. Like even look at Dylan's room. We just recorded vocals in that room and it was fine. No, um, the, the big thing I find that people will make a mistake is is they'll be like, Oh my god, I don't, you know, they're scared of a big room that's not yeah. treated, so they'll put they'll put their mic off near a wall. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll like they'll like Good squirrel idea. it away in the corner and like boundaries guys yeah. reflections <laughs> like That's so amazing. yeah if you have to be in a, even we say this to to sales reps when they go out to do their own remote client recordings it's like if you have to be in a big untreated room ideally a very large untreated room get in the middle of it we give them like a 58 which has pretty decent rejection and it's like that'll give you the best chance you can't find a closet if you can't find yeah, something with with lots of fabric. <laughs> <laughs> fabric works so well. Uh, Steve, an architect friend of mine, showed me how to put the rock wool under each table to really dampen things down in a room, and it is invisible. Yeah, the rock wool does a lot for slowing down, uh, basically sound waves. Like it, 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 all I did in this room, I remember I did the video of me, like you know, I did this whole dramatic thing where I walked through the house and. And it was the first time I stepped foot in this room and we were building it up and the room was so echoey because it's only like a, I think it's a 15 or maybe like a 12 by 25 room. And it was echoey. And I was walking around with my phone talking about this and I put up those five panels and it almost fixed the room immediately just with five panels on the wall. Well, and, and even little things like, okay, so, so putting air gaps behind your absorption panels, because yeah. whenever sound waves, whenever pressure waves hit an area or, or a substance of different density than what they're, so if they're going through, if it goes from water and it goes into air, or if it goes from air to water to solid, all of those different densities, it loses a ton of energy in that process, yeah. which is why when you look at like major studio designs, when they're building walls, what you'll have is you'll have drywall, love studs with insulation sometimes not drywall sometimes they'll just put like fabric over top yeah. of the wool then a gap like a four to six inch gap then another bunch of studs and 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 basically like a 12 inch thick wall with you know a gap in the middle that's like an ideal scenario um and then on top of that if you can not again not use drywall it's like i don't know if, if you've ever been in a in a house being built before the vapor barrier gets put up on top of the insulation and it's yeah. just dead like that's that's kind of what you're aiming for, and so a lot of people will, instead of putting up a vapor barrier and drywall, this is a bad idea on an outside wall. But <laughs> but um, if you if just assuming that your studio is all inside walls, which hopefully it is, um, then yeah, you you just get a ton of fabric. I've seen guys like just staple gun it and just just enough to stop the the fiberglass from coming out. Oh, no. Yep, I've seen uh, screen just cover everything in screen. The most acoustically transparent thing screen uh richard mitchell people love to crush your dreams because they generally don't have their own keep going love the show videos thank you uh and yeah i i think that's a common theme on the internet these days uh people just get pissy and they disagree with something like i can see a, an audio snob watching a video like that going fuck rockwell doesn't do anything but then if you're incapable of seeing the uses of those panels in something like a voiceover studio well you're just an idiot uh, and a bitter one at that. Uh, I like in UK video suggestion, demonstrating different audio processing tools and effects, what compression or EQ does to your voice and what works or what does not work. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Speaking of Dylan doing videos, I know he's working towards actually uh, launching his channel. I was going to say, I'm going to steal that specific idea because that's that's easy content that for is, me. But for that's, me also is. Like, that's also the kind of stuff. Now, the future of my channel Dylan's still going to be kicking around and we're going to be playing with stuff still. Uh, but when Dylan launches his channel, we're going to be crossing over our channels quite a bit. And that was, that's going to be the ultimate goal. Uh, I don't know how prolific Dylan's going to be for putting content out, which is fine. But a lot of the content I think we're going to be crossing over and doing together to try to like build each other up. Um, yep. So when it does come out, don't worry, it will feature heavily on my channel and you will know when Dylan's channel is. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. You know, yeah. if I'm putting out a video next week on the stream, I'll mention it here. Yeah, <laughs> and we've got we've got a lot of. Uh, we already have our first video concept up. So we're not up, but we know what our, our first video concept is going to be. Yeah. So that'll be the. Um, the yeah, the, and they're going to be crossover videos, and I don't mean crossovers in ways that 
like he's part of mine, I'm part of his. Yes, that's part of it, but it's also like one will lead into the next. So you watch my video and you'll be like, oh shit, I want to know how to do that. You'll go to Dylan's video and he'll break everything down for you or vice versa. So yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I think it's going to be a great way to uh, develop Dylan's concepts that might not fly as well on this channel. I know there's a lot of people on this channel that would be very interested in learning from Dylan. But then I also know there's some uh, a heavy contingent of podcast nerds who just want to see gear reviews. So um, this kind of separates some of that. And it also gives Dylan a little bit of power to do his own thing. Uh, Camille bought a lot of shitload of, uh, bought a shitload of acoustic panels this weekend and next weekend. I'm busy. Nice. nice. Uh, I actually, I'm thinking about doing that at some point. Uh, also there's egg acoustic panels for sale with an egg carton print. <laughs> that is funny. You know what? Yeah, whatever. I mean, the, the, um, depending on what you're getting, like the, the type of, uh, panels you're getting, uh, what it is on the outside doesn't really matter. Uh, depending on the type of, uh, like I've got the little, what are they called? The, um, what's the brand of all the foam I've got on my walls? Uh, big name. Uh, so, Orlex. Orlex. Thank you. The Orlex. I've got the little, the little, uh, V shaped ones all over my walls. Uh, and then you can also get the, like the cone ones too. It doesn't matter. Uh, when one realizes how effective budget heavy curtain and moving blankets are, it makes criticizing DIY sound panels a pretty dumb shit move. <laughs> it's so true, man. You can do true. so much with fucking blankets. Yeah. And like a moving blanket can literally create a booth. Um, uh, Marianne, who is uh, actually becoming a massive voiceover talent. Uh, she has her voiceover booth and it's a couple blankets and she makes like, she makes bank on that, man. Like she makes so much money doing that. I don't want to out how much she makes, but she doesn't have to work a day job. Let's just say and she <laughs> rides your bike a lot. She gets to go out and hike and do all of her bike riding, riding quite a bit. Blankets are awesome. And Hill Acoustics. I'm going to look that up actually while we're in here. I've got to find, we've got a good Canadian one, which I kind of want to partner with. Anthill Audio Factory, acoustic panels, universal yeah. range. Oh, yeah. So basically, they're just absorber panels. Yeah. I mean, wonder what they're made out of. Probably the, uh, what's it called? Uh, that uh, Corning. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 705 or. Yeah. Not affiliated. <laughs> uh, if folks don't want to be value added in their comments, they should start their own channel and be creative enough to find a way to explain ban the discussion rockwell is great by the way yeah i don't um sometimes people just like to try to cut you and there's some there's some pretty shitty people out there in the world and oh, yeah. again though once again if it has no value i mostly just put them in a little closet and wait to make fun of them in a video so uh aiden this is kylie kylie i don't think i've seen you on the channel welcome to the channel kylie aiden i think your audio sounds drier and more balanced than dylan's going on ears alone you did a decent job in your space yeah dylan's is uh he's up against a wall he's also got a screen right in front of him um he's yeah i can't do i'm in an apartment here so yeah. i can't i can't start making a tons of holes in the walls my particular property management company is is a very um conscious of that because they Picky. don't like spending money on paint um, um and so yeah um there i've debated in the past getting like gobos like mobile um panels on stands but like yeah this room's tight enough as it is i don't need acoustic you, panel stands and it's also dylan doesn't have much need and this is the thing like when you're doing some recording as long as it's not bass heavy you can still have an active room no, and, and I I should also mention I don't this particular mic and the chain that it's going through is is pretty much exclusively for live either Teams calls yeah. or Zoom calls or this. Um, you know, the actual, you know, finite audio processing chain that I use for voiceover. Um it doesn't go through this. I'm not the biggest fan of the processor that this mic is going through. It's a Vorsis M2 Wheatstone um mic processor, and it's uh it's not as versatile as some of the other software. Like at this point for what it is, I might as well just get hardware, a hardware tool. Like a DBX would probably do. Well, the gate is a little better than a DBX, but yeah. 
Uh, and to, I'm also using a shotgun mic. Like I do have yeah, a little yeah, bit of activity. regular cardioid. <laughs> I do have activity in this room, a little bit of it uh, in certain areas. This area is actually quite good. I've got kind of a TV set up behind this, but there's a lot of clutter back there. To this side, I've got some Oralex treatment. Behind me is obviously completely bare. That's for the aesthetic. But to either side, I've got panels and I've got clutter slash Oralex on this side. I actually have a pretty, pretty dead space. But again, this also comes down to you don't need a perfectly inactive space. And I actually, Rick on Mike asked this, is it possible to treat a room too much for vocal recording? Not yes. really. You, um, you if, if, it, if it's a small room, yeah, oh, small you, start, room, yeah. you start to get like boundary effect and low, yeah. big kind of low mid range frequencies start to like Boxiness. bunch up together. And yeah. yeah. Well, that's um, like when you've got the uh, the, the isovox. Booth. The isovox is a perfect yeah. example of that. Yeah, it's and and they've they've really designed well. a mic that specifically counters that low yeah. end muddiness. So yes, it is technically. But if you're in a normal room, like I could, I can treat the fuck out of this room. Oh yeah, th this I'd room. If I set aside, like you know, assuming that that uh, leases were no object, um, <laughs> and <laughs> and I you know I just set a thousand dollars in treatment. For a room of this size, this is about what maybe 175 square feet total, and yeah. and really, I'm just you know I would go with a live end, dead end kind of scenario where I would treat this side of the room, but that side of the room I don't really care about. Yeah. Um, and that can go a long way too. Another thing is like people think like, oh my god, I got to treat my entire wall. Not necessarily yeah. because sound. Think of your wall like picture your wall as a mirror. Like one thing that I found is a really effective tool for figuring out if you're in a mixing room, figuring out where your acoustic panel should go is get a friend to like stand against the wall with a mirror against their chest parallel to the wall and get them to walk around the room and you sit in your mixing chair like i am now and as they're walking around the room look and wherever you see the whenever you see the speaker cone reflected back in your face that's where a panel goes because that's where your early reflection is going to hit so um you know just kind of miking or, or not miking but uh, acoustically treating the areas of the room um in terms of height that you're actually working in, like the top and bottom foot, do they need to be treated? No, I've been in very dead studios that have absolutely no treatment at the very bottom and the very top, and they're completely dead. Um, so, you know, that's because you're not miking something close to the floor. Don't do that in a room where you're recording drums. No, no. And you know what I mean? It, it, again, it comes down to what you're, uh, for vocal recording, I mean, you can be in a cluttered room I believe you, Liberty Dude says this, like my first studio, the first Dark Corner Studios was all cluttered. Go back and watch my first video. It's like we basically, our basement was our dump spot for everything we didn't know what to do with. And we didn't clean it up. And I just cleaned out a corner and that turned into Dark Corner Studios for me. And uh, yeah, I, I panned the camera in that first video and it's just shits everywhere. And, oh, it, yeah. was, and it was a concrete fucking room, untreated concrete walls. And we, we talked about that, you and I, like, you know, how, like, I, I get suspicious when I walk into a studio and there isn't just shit everywhere. Um, <laughs> you know, like, be, because to me, it's like, it's a room, it's a, it's essentially a, a recording studio or a, a studio of any kind is a lab, yeah. basically. And so you kind of expect to see the labs being used. You expect some test tubes and beakers to be everywhere. Um, and so in the case of a recording studio, that's DI boxes, uh, you know, microphones, mic stands, music stands, camera tripods, like everything. Right. And so this, this room is always a complete mess. I'm, I'm looking at my studio, man. I, oh, I got a pile of, uh, USB cables. Just I got, I, I, I got three guitars on the floor, a cajon. I got a mic with the cable doing, I don't know what the fuck the cable's doing, but it's not attached to the mic. Yeah, yours <laughs> like, is cleaner just, than mine. I'm going to just put it out there. Your studio is a fuck. Okay. Well, but you, okay. I, I gave this thing like a thorough clutter clut down. Oh, um, there, that's a new word, clut yeah. down. If, oh. if I knew you were coming over, I'd do a pretty good cleaning on this too. But I, well, because, uh, because you know, as uh, when I'm one person, I'm used to navigating this room. You know, yeah. even my partner looks in here and goes, I'm not going in there. That's yeah. that's that's a trip hazard. <laughs> There's a giant trip hazard that is that room. Uh, Red Cabin, I once heard a VO coach say, Don't take criticism from anyone you wouldn't take advice from. Amen to that. <laughs> That just goes for everything, though. Like, don't yeah. don't go to someone for advice. Don't take criticism from somebody who would never ask for advice. 
uh liberty dude this is actually a good video idea even cluttering space can help with diffusion too still waiting to see someone do a before empty and after uh miscellaneous packed storage space sound comparison oh man That's this actually, room like like maybe when i move when i move a good idea. I, i'll record a clip here before i start tearing down of me doing a, a vo passage and then i'll have a mic in the middle of the room interface outside the room like cable running out one stand in the middle and i'll show the difference yeah um and and guaranteed oh my god this it was this room sound horrible oh, this room was the same before i came in uh yeah it was pretty bad i do want to so i have a dream for uh uh i don't know how to pull it off yet so the goal is is to test all the acoustic type of stuff uh in a similar space uh, so I've got the Amazon acoustic foam, you know, that crap they sell on Amazon. It actually doesn't do a horrendous job uh, for voice. For it voice. barely deals with the mid range. Come on. It does barely, but it does. It, it deal sort of somewhat. filters out the sibilance. I'm, I'm not saying that it, you like put this stuff up and it's perfect. Fuck no. Um, the other one is people that put egg cartons on their walls. I wanted to test that. Oh, Egg gosh. Or Alex. Yeah. Uh, and so one space where I can do one video like showing the differences and why egg cartons don't work. The other one is um, you know, those uh those foam thing pads you can get for your bed, they look like egg carton style. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I used to use those. That actually works in corners. It's not great, it's not great whatsoever. It's okay for voice. Uh, so I wanted to do a video, but I don't know whether or not. Maybe I just have to build a booth in my basement. And that's actually like, I have a corner over here that I could build a booth in. So I'm thinking that might actually just do a voiceover booth in this. Why not? I mean, I, I am a, a YouTube studio. Might as well have a booth. Uh, but yeah, it's, you'll maybe see that coming, Liberty dude. Maybe I'll get Dylan in here to help me with the construction. Uh, feels familiar. My home off is, oh, office is a complete mess. Amen. Uh, yeah. You know what? I the reason it's a mess here is because one, I know where everything is. Two, I work in this. I'm in this studio at least twelve hours a day. That's my problem. I clean yeah. and then I I forget where I put stuff during the cleaning process. <laughs> exactly. And then you're like, well, fuck, where did I put that? Oh um, yeah. Well, it's like you when you were here, we were filming the video, and I was looking for. Oh yeah, I was uh, looking for the yeah. pieces for the wireless go to. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't find them. I'm like, where the hell? I seen this. I know where this is uh i'm surrounded by cables and crap right now that's dan amen to cables and crap that's the best one as long as it's not your crap don't shit in the room you uh record in dan opinions are cheap everyone has them i respect yours that's why we're here thank you i appreciate that uh aliexpress for the very low end Ooh, yeah maybe <laughs> oh, i should do oh. that well, yeah <laughs> see what they have on there for i mean i don't i think you would be surprised at uh, various low end uh I don't want to nationalize it, so I won't. But a uh, very low end. <laughs> <laughs> I want this to become like some. Where's AliExpress based out of? Uh, but it's true, right? Like, but it's the same thing on Amazon. But, you know, those those kind of parts of the world um, where you know there are manufacturers that are looking to replicate stuff for the cheapest possible. Yep. Um, and, and, and their replication abilities in some senses have got like I've gotten some cheap stuff that's actually really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because again, it's all, are they knockoffs of things, uh, product? Absolutely. Um, I won't do that with audio because I find they will skimp out on the circuitry because you don't see the skip, the circuitry in the, in the, the pamphlet that comes with the thing. Um, but yeah, it's doable for cheap. Sorry, just blow my nose. All good. <laughs> Nobody needs to see or hear that. Um, yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe I'll look into building this booth over the, over the spring and maybe, cause I mean, it would be good to have a voiceover booth in this studio that I can professionally treat, but even a voiceover booth, you just put an Oralex up. You're not doing anything bigger than Oralex in it. So, but yeah, I'd have a nice voiceover booth. I guess I could, I could restart my voiceover career, Dylan. Uh, Steve says clean equals hidden. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Cleanliness is godliness. A uh, character in a movie once said, was just, uh, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. After seeing the movie, my friend said to me, you have tons of assholes. Ah, <laughs> uh, Liberty dude. <laughs> opinions are fine. And you know what? I mean, uh, you, I don't think you have to have a thick skin 
to do YouTube, I mean, you get a lot of shit thrown at you. I remember once way back, I did a video. I didn't even have a hundred subscribers and I did a video basically how to use Adobe audition in multi-track and I'm pretty good in, in Adobe audition. It's not a hard program to use. And somebody wrote on there, you should be ashamed of yourself peddling this off as, as, and I actually took the video down. I felt complete shame for it. But then I realized I'm like, I was kind of stumbling through cause I didn't script it, which I'd, I work very well with the script. I don't work very well off script. Um, and I think that was part of the reason I sounded unsure of what I was doing. And there's a lot to the multi-track uh, recording space in Adobe. So uh, yeah, it's one of those things that after that, I was like, fuck that guy. And I, had, I think I ended up putting it back up, but it's not necessarily a thick skin. It's a confidence in what you're doing. I know I'm not the smartest guy when it comes to everything. I surround myself with smarter people than me. And there's a reason for that. Nobody is the smartest at everything, at, a, at a anything. You see these guys who start YouTube channels and they're not the smartest of what they're starting the YouTube channel at. You look at uh, Peter McKinnon when he first started out uh, a photography and a filmmaking channel. And even he's like, oh, I wasn't a videographer when I started that out. I was a photographer. And yet he started uh, filmmaking channel, right? So it's, it's one of those things that you grow with your channel and you grow in knowledge, but anybody that stands before you and says that they're the smartest at something, or they know everything about something, uh, disregard everything they're going to say. Cause they're no, bullshit. learning doesn't stop when you exit school. Learning is a lifelong process. Yeah. Um, if, if you graduate university and you are the same, <laughs> And you are the same. No, there's like a uh, residue at the bottom. And I was trying to figure out what it is. I just sort of, <laughs> I just sort of grabbed this glass out of the sink uh, and thought I cleaned it, but apparently not. It's not beer either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the colors uh, spout. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, it's something completely I mean, different from beer. No, it's a lifelong process. Even like there's some things that I know a lot about and I still like, you know, you sent me a thing today and you were like, hey, is this something you, you might be able to shed some light on? And I'm like, I know about this, but I'm, yeah. you know, and so what did I do? I went and watched like three hours worth of videos on that type of product just to, <laughs> just to familiar, but, but by audio files, like videos of audio files talking about, but not only audio files, but audio file engineers talking about how they make these things. Um, and just to, to figure out, okay, what, you know, how am I going to critique this if I, I don't have a scale to judge it against basically. And so, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, always learning. Uh, there is not a single subject that I know things about that I know every, or even close to everything about. Right. Um, well, it was, it was like, I'm doing the, uh, the tier list video coming up for Monday and, uh, through it, I basically did a tier list of every microphone I've reviewed on this channel and review is a really, really loose <laughs> term. Cause some of the stuff I didn't technically review and it, I came up to the ribbon mic that you lent me, the ART AR5. And I didn't technically review that microphone. Um, I did, I told you what the specs were, but I kind of went into the concept of what ribbon mics are and why you might want one in your studio. The reason I did that, and this is pretty simple, I didn't know what I was talking about when it came to ribbon mics, because I've used a few in my time, but I can't adequately say this is a shitty ribbon mic. Since then, I can actually say the AR5 is a shitty ribbon mic. I can actually say that's not a great, I've gained experience. And so it's, it's one of those recognizing, like when people see you as a YouTube channel that focuses on audio, they're like, well, this guy posts himself as an expert in audio. That's not true. Uh, a lot of my skill set relies in the fact that I know how to perform. Um, and I've done a lot of learning on this channel like that with, with ribbon mics. So I think it's, it all comes down to, uh, you know, I mean, just always never expect the people that are, are talking to you on YouTube are vetted experts. Um, and you know, if anyone tells you that they're an expert in something, don't believe them. I, I don't believe that whatsoever. I don't believe anyone's a perfect expert on anything. No. And, and there have been times even on this, on these streams where like, you know, I'll bring bangs, naughty bits up as an example has corrected me on a number of things. And, and, you know, upon, 
up, you know, some in the of most them, gracious way too. And, I'm just and, and you know, just for <laughs> for honesty, some of them are just not correct. But but uh, most of them, I'm like, I'm looking at it going, okay, you know, that's a fair. And some of it's opinion based, like, oh, well, this is better than that. It's like, well, no, that can be better than this in this context. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. You know, that there's, there's, there are a lot of, uh, it's, some of this is not objective information. Again, what we're talking about, somebody brought this up last stream that we did, right, about mixes and how, what makes a good mixing engineer? Like, well, everybody's mix sounds good to them. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I think what makes a mixing engineer good is that their mix sounds good to multiple people. And ideally, if you're a good mixing engineer, your mix sounds good to the most people, hopefully. Um, and so I, I think there's a lot of subjectivity to what we do is I guess what I'm trying to get at is, yeah. and you know, you, what I think sounds good, right. And, and in certain contexts might not sound good. Great example. I tried to record a jingle with my $3,000 knee free amp <laughs> um, with, you know, we're talking like, like 24, um, 24 layers of vocals. And I wasn't getting this shimmer that I would get from a clean preamp or especially like, you know, an API preamp that's very yeah. bright and forward and, you know, 80s metal vocal kind of present and in your face. Um, I wasn't getting that from the Neve, but then I used that same Neve to record uh, some slide guitar for a Christmas album that I sent you. And I'm like, oh, I don't even have to do anything to this. This sounds amazing. <laughs> um, and so there's a ton of subjectivity. There's a, a ton of application specificity, right? Um, there's, a, <laughs> there's a clusterfuck of a word. But there, there's, there is a certain, um, you know, like, again, the acoustics thing. Great example, right? You talk about acoustics. And somebody approaching it from a you know mixing room live end dead end standpoint is like that's stupid. You're an idiot. And it's like well, if I was talking about what you're talking about, yes, I'm an idiot. But I'm not talking about what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's apples and oranges. It's uh, yeah, uh, Liberty dude. Sometimes when you try to communicate to others starting out, you have to keep it basic enough for them to grasp. The person that can't grasp that reminds me of the one teacher everyone hated. Yeah, and you know what? I mean, a lot of a lot of this channel has been from a beginner's focus. Um, and the reason is, is you'll find more people starting out into audio watching YouTube videos than you'll find professional audio engineers. It's and true. There, there is some professional audio engineers on YouTube. And like, I look at guys like Julian Krause. Um, that guy's speaking a language for people that need to know that language. Hey, you ever, you ever heard of Dave Rat? <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. Dave. Rapp. <laughs> and so I struggle with this because I can, you know, and this isn't me to my own or this is just experience, right? I can speak those guys languages. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've done repairs on equipment like that. I've looked at schematics. I can understand the schematic of a compressor and a, a hardware compressor and how it works. But at the same time, that's not like the, <laughs> if I'm explaining those things to somebody they probably know enough to already have a source for that information without having to go to youtube necessarily if you're going to youtube as a knowledge base chances are you you're looking for that kind of intermediate beginner level of stuff so even i found with some of the stuff i've been scripting out for my own content is i'm having to not dumb it down but distill it down into its essence so that we're not getting caught up in the weeds because almost every component and every circuit decision of an equalizer is something that you can make an entire video on, right? So if you want to drill down deep enough, you totally can. I just watched a video today of PS Audio talking about digital analog converters. And I'm like, nice. okay, y'all are talking about galvanization of <laughs> the chassis to reduce yeah noise and, and ground loop area and how it correlates to noise distribution. Like I, I don't, <laughs> I don't think most, most people who need to know that stuff are in that field and they probably have someone next yeah, door. There's an actual art to it. There's an art to, to being approachable and being accessible for content. Right. And I, I boil it down to the Linus tech tips of this world and the gamers nexus of this world. If you don't know who I'm talking about, uh, Linus Tech Tips is more like flowery. He has a lot of knowledge behind him, but all of his stuff is accessible. You can watch any of his videos and know what's going on at all times, even if you're not into computers. It's digestible. Yeah. It's digestible. Right? Then you look at gamers nexus, and unless you know what you're talking about when you're ripping apart a GPU, 
you're kind of screwed. I mean, his channel isn't accessible whatsoever, but unless you're into that, if you're into that kind of stuff, he's perfect for you. And it's the same thing when you look at the, like my channel versus Julian Kraus, it's very, a very similar comparison between the two and uh sr 375 yeah there's that version of the extra pompous audio file quote unquote <laughs> audio well, it's, it's like again like like does anybody go to cole's notes for schematics no no no, no. non-canadians no. don't know what cole's notes are by the way oh really okay yeah, yeah um, cole's was never uh uh i don't think it was i think cole's was a canadian thing it was bought was it a canadian I could have been, but so Cole's notes are like tiny little pocketbooks that give you uh, information on a particular topic, but in again, in bite-sized little kind of nuggets. And are you going to go super deep? And I think a big part of the, you know, we talked earlier about the YouTube format. A big part of the YouTube format is scale, right? Is how, wait, where are you going with this? Know who you're talking to, right? And so, you know, if I start throwing out. Cliff like, notes, yeah, they're called cliff notes. Yeah, the Coles is a Canadian bookstore chain, and it was bought out by Indigo, so it's now basically chapters. Yeah, yeah, um, but but it's like you you have to know your audience. You have to know how to distill that. Like I think for me, and one thing I hate from a educational standpoint is when people get shamed for not knowing something. I think in terms of, I mean, the number one thing that pisses me off in comments is when people get pissed off at somebody for being passionate about something. That's number one. I hate that. Uh, it's like, don't shit on somebody for liking what they're doing or liking, you know, having an interest, having a passion. That's such a shitty thing to do. But the second is don't shame somebody for not knowing something because yep. at some point, everybody doesn't know something, right? At some point, like you sit there in your high horse as an educator and you're like, well, <laughs> you're stupid ass. You didn't know this. It's like, yeah, you didn't know that at some point too. Did you come out of the womb knowing what, you know, that TRS yep. cables, three rings means, or two rings means stereo. I don't think you knew that. No, right. And, you know what I mean? And it's funny too, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in my forties and there's shit that I'm learning still to this day. Uh, okay. So we got to get going. Uh, I do have to show Liberty dude. Thank you again for the super chat. If you add up all the known knowledge, there's still more unknown than known. Absolutely. hundred yeah, percent. I love so that. That's so willing, true. Willing to admit they don't know everything. Fuck the person that thinks they're perfect. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, um, I've spoke to a, a pretty wise person, uh, a very well-to-do person that kind of lamented the same thing. And it's the, you'll find, you'll find more knowledge from somebody that admits they don't know everything. You will get more truth out of people like that than you will out of somebody that thinks they know everything. Because in order to keep the charade up of knowing everything, you have to make shit up and you have to be a bullshitter. And I can bullshit the best of them. Well, but, but I would go f mathematical with that. And I would say that when you, when everybody kind of thinks they have a good sense of something until they don't, right. Um, there's some things where I'm like, I'm not going to speak on that because I'm not fully aware of the nuances of this thing, but by and large, I'm like, okay, I can speak on that. I feel like I know enough about that, yeah. but, but that with that comes a certain license to extrapolate, yeah. right. License to take what you know and say, okay, based on what I understand about this concept, I it feel like I can, I can assume yeah. blah, 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 blah. Um, and, and so I think sometimes those extrapolations are wrong. Yeah, um, well, absolutely. But I mean, it's also the, the intellectual person that can actually admit that. Uh, Dan, just before we go here, says, I wish there were balanced headphone connections on more than just audio fi file gear sometimes. You, you know what's funny? You sent me that. Uh, you sent me a thing today, a piece of gear. Yeah. And I looked at it, and one thing that pissed me off the most <laughs> about was that, was that it uses four point four millimeter connectors. <laughs> um, and so, for those that don't know, four point four mil, it's like a, it's a Bantam. It's a tiny cell phone TT connection. Yeah. Uh, and they're very common on Studio Patch Base Studio, like ninety six point four point four mil jacks. But I'm like, I don't, I have patch cables that, that are that diameter. I don't have actual like headphones that, that I don't have adapters for that. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, Amazon or AliExpress. You'll be fine. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I'm a bit late, but I hope it's a good stream. Good to see you guys. Be just you smoke 187. Cheers, buddy. Uh, and Kylie, I always say learning is life. Greetings from AOT. Tirio Roa. 
I don't know where that is. We're, we're, ignorant. we're ignorant. Where is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're, 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 a we're ignorant and we are uh, geographically it's compromised. It's New Zealand. Is it? Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, well, let me just. Yeah. Okay. So it's a town in New Zealand. All I got is Etora, New Zealand. Is it now? Oh, is it, it Maori language name for New Zealand? Oh, that's so cool. Just just so we refer to you right, is it Kyle with a lot of emphasis or is it Kylie? What is it? Yeah, well, yeah. So that's actually a fair question. Oh, so it is the Maori language name for New Zealand. That is awesome. That that's is interesting. Cool. I've never know that. More again, talk about learning. <laughs> I just uh, learned something. Greetings from Turtle Island. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the land of the long white cloud, New Zealand. Awesome. Uh, it was a very enjoyable stream. Worth we'll rewatch later, like the video before you go. Cheers, Liberty Dude. I appreciate that. Yeah, drop a like if you like it. And Sneed, greetings from Gypsonia. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am not allowed to say that. Uh, <laughs> okay, I said it while I wasn't thinking about it. I apologize, Dan. Uh, hello, everyone. Happy Friday to all. Cheers, guys. Have yourself a great weekend. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week on this live stream. And hopefully I don't uh, feel or sound like shit next week. Cheers. Later.